Howdy folks, welcome to a Halloween video here at Ordnance Lab. This video right here actually came to me. I was, took off to Morocco for a week just to get away from all the crazy stuff going on. I'm flying back on Lufthansa watching The Dark Knight in German. And that scene where the Gotham's underworld get together for what the Joker called a group therapy session. And it's interrupted by the Joker when they try to go after him. The one dude says, let's kill that clown. And he pulls out his uh, vest with a whole bunch of grenades. And I'm sitting there... We need to do that for a video and show what actually would have happened during that. So for this Halloween one, we're going to get Rescue Randy dressed up rather crappily as the Joker. We're going to set off five grenades on there at once to show what actually would have happened had the Joker pulled the pin on those. We'll cut to Jake to get into all that science stuff now. Like what Sean said, our Halloween special derives from the hit 2008 film The Dark Knight. If you haven't seen it, then you totally need to. It's a really good film. It definitely makes up for a certain Batman video that, well, shall not be named. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. Batman, <laughs> sing! <laughs> Louder, come on, sing, sing, sing! Yeah, that one. Christian Bale stars as Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman, and the late Heath Ledger as the Joker. In my opinion, Heath Ledger totally stole the limelight in this movie with his amazing performance as Batman's nemesis. Especially in this scene where he makes a hospital go kablooey. Let me stop the video right here, before we go any further. I know a ton of people are going to ask if we can clone the hospital explosion. The answer is technically yes, but we would need a ton of moolah to do that. So financially, no. Want to help us out? You can totally support us through our Patreon account. We also have an Utreon page where you can donate and we will start uploading uncensored content that would be too spicy for YouTube. Anyways, the scene we are dealing with in this video is this one. The crime bosses of Gotham have a little powwow get together to discuss business and stuff. You know, crime boss things. The Joker eventually makes an unexpected appearance in his usual eccentric fashion. Things get a little heated between the Joker and one of the mobsters. So the Joker pulls one heck of a flex by showing what he has under his jacket. A cluster of grenades all attached to a pull wire. Five grenades from what we can see consisting of various models. Like the old saying goes, variety is the spice of life. Freezing the video here, we can roughly see the scenario where he would have deployed this setup. It's a small space with everyone within about a 7 meter circle from where the Joker eventually positions himself, give or take. So we got to work setting up the recreation. For our Joker stand-in, we have one of our rescue Randys ready to risk it all for science. Talk about a brave guy. We were going to go with a traditional suit we had left over, but it burnt up in the house fire, so this will have to do. Once we finally got rescue Randy dressed up in his Halloween costume, we propped him up on the T-post. Due to him not having two complete legs, this was the best standing position we could get out of him. Will it really matter? Not really. We prepared five grenades for this test. Two Mark IIs, two M26s, and one M67. We're not entirely sure how the Joker attached the grenades to the jacket, either with tape or sewn in straps. The costume jacket was pretty flimsy and not strong enough to support the weight of the grenades. So we then wondered, would the Joker be able to effectively pull the grenade pins from the grenades while attached to the jacket? Let's talk about that first. So something we want to point out from the video is that you can see all these grenades attached to the Joker's jacket. And that's not a big problem, it's actually a pretty, pretty clever idea. It's a very fancy bomb vest. But there's a big problem here, is that he has them attached either via tape or straps that are sewn into the jacket, and that's fine and all, except that, well, if you want to pull the pins, this might create a problem. Because, well, it takes a lot of force to pull pins out of a grenade. Now, the pin is basically a cotter pin, that's all it is, and that is what's holding the spoon from flying off and uh, the striker hitting the primer, starting the grenade. So basically, when the pin is out, the grenade is not your friend. It also means that it's difficult to pull this out because there's spring tension on the spoon, as well as the cotter pin that's been flexed out so it doesn't fall out easily, because, well, you don't want it to fall out easily, otherwise the grenade would go off. This force could create a problem because it could rip the grenade out of the, if it's tape, it would come right off. And if it's sewn in, the sewing, the sewing may not survive because, well, if the jacket is cheap, it might literally rip the, sh the jacket to shreds. Of course, if, as long as one grenade goes off, it should detonate the rest, right? But, you know, there's no guarantee that it happens. So what we want to do is demonstrate that it takes a lot of force to pull the pin out. So what I have here is a dummy grenade. 
Now, otherwise, if this was a real grenade, it'd be the fastest five seconds of sprinting I've ever had in my entire life. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this trigger uh, pull gauge to see how much energy or how much uh, um, measured in mass and kilograms and ounces, how much it takes to pull this pin out. Now this one doesn't have a spring in it, so it's gonna be less tension, but that's gonna give you an idea that even with this right here, this cotter pin, which is slightly uh, flexed to come out, it's still gonna be a lot of force. So I'll set it to zero and let's see this. Yep, maxed out the gauge. The gauge maxes out at 4.5 kilos or 10 ounces. So if I soften the cotter pin some more, so hopefully it comes out, Let's see if it works. Nope, still. So it takes a lot of force to pull this out. That's why if you see in the videos, people are pulling these out with their teeth. Yeah, I can't really recommend that. It's actually gonna ruin your teeth or break them. So is it feasible? Absolutely. Now, mind you, this cotter pin is rusted and these grenade fuses are not in great condition. A new grenade fuse would probably work a whole lot better, but the likelihood of him effectively yanking all those fuse, those grenade pins out without any problems, eh, I'm gonna say it's probably not gonna work. It's feasible, but not under uh, ideal, only under ideal conditions. But you know, it's a movie, so moving on. Moving on, we made a grenade bouquet with rope and then attached it to Rescue Randy on the same side as the Joker had it in the movie. The Joker is obviously right-handed as the grenades are on the left side. We prepared three drywall silhouettes to serve as targets to see what kind of shrapnel would get thrown at such close proximity. We placed the targets at roughly 2 meters, 5 meters, and 7 meters. The grenades were all connected via deck cord so we can detonate them at once to emulate if all five went off at the same time without a sympathetic detonation. This being the best case scenario, as far what the Joker was aiming for. Here we go. Fire in the hole! I don't think it comes as a surprise that this was going to be an effective use of grenades. The blast was beyond impressive. Let's rewind the video here and freeze the video here, which brings us this amazing photo. You can see where the fragmentation was hitting the ground all around the Joker. That's just the fragmentation that was directed downward. Plenty more went flying elsewhere. You can even make out where the shrapnel struck this target here. This video we can slow down significantly and can see a whole new angle in slow motion. The blast is still too fast for this camera, so we can rewind it really quick and freeze frame the shot here. This image gives us a crystal clear depiction of the fragmentation directed at the targets. We can zoom in and see this target just getting owned by the blast. The aftermath was as expected, a total mess that we now have to clean up. This rescue Randy will have to get retired, unfortunately. He served us with great honor and diligence to duty. F4 respects. This was the 7 meter target and it was pretty well peppered. Some of the impacts being pretty significant in size. The 5 and 2 meter targets were knocked to the ground and both were covered in shrapnel marks. The shockwave also left the plaster interior fractured which is not surprising. It was one heck of a boom. Here is what's left of the mask. It managed to fare okay despite how major the blast was would make for a decent Halloween mask as is. So, would the Joker's grenade trick been effective at taking down the mobster meeting in one whack? Absolutely. Would the Joker been able to yank all the grenade pins in one go? Eh, probably not. But just one grenade detonating would have caused a sympathetic detonation, and eventually all of them would have detonated as well. Then again, this is the DC Universe, so anything could happen really. Well, hopefully y'all enjoyed that video. That was a rather impressive bang with all five grenades going off at once. Our apologies for not having a very realistic Joker. And I'm sure that there's gonna be someone there in the comments section complaining about this or that, how it's not realism or realistic. 
But just like, hey, South Park had Butter's very own episode. If you want to have your very own custom episode where you want to write the bills for everything, we are willing to work with you. So if you want to see that happen, we can definitely do it as long as someone's willing to be our sugar daddy or sugar mama. Um, we're willing to sell out Jake there for a um, reasonable price. So anyways, thanks again for watching and we'll see y'all next time here at Ordnance Lab.